Hello guys from Truro in Cornwall. My train taking me here has just left and I am sitting on platform one waiting for the train to take me down to Falmouth Docks on the Maritime Line. Uh, most interesting branch line I think. I've never been on it before. So it's going to be about 10 minutes before it arrives. I'm going to jump on it and um, see what it's like. So why don't you come with me for the ride and I'll catch you when I get to Falmouth. Cheers for now. Right, so opened in 1859, Truro Station is basically two platforms either side of the London to Penzance mainline and a shorter platform, Platform 1, uh, which serves the branch line we would be exploring today down to Falmouth Docks. It was pretty quiet when I arrived and I was able to enjoy some of the historical features and fittings such as the benches and uh, dagger boards on the canopy roof. Now there's an interesting route map painted onto the brick wall on platform 2 here depicting the extension of the line from Plymouth down to Penzance. It's a pleasant enough space to spend half an hour or so but um, my train would be arriving soon and it was time to make a move. Uh, Great Western Railway Class 150 two car diesel multiple units serve this route normally. Uh, they really are a workhorse of these branch lines and I was to encounter several more over the course of the next couple of days. A few passengers had turned up at this point, uh, but the train was by no means busy. And I chose one of the table seats in the section of the train that also enables cycles to be stored using the brackets and straps you can see here uh, that are on either side of the foldable seats. Now I was expecting a pretty hot day today uh, and it was good to see that this particular train was prepared for that uh, with its open windows and uh, providing ventilation to the carriage. And above the window you have some storage space and this continues in sections along the length of the train. Now, it was good to see a mix of seats in here. Uh, probably not the most comfortable seats ever, but you know, for a journey time of around 24 minutes, that's not terribly important. Uh, they were clean, which is the main thing, isn't it? Uh, the table was nice and robust, and GWR have fitted both conventional um, and USB power sockets at every row, which is great to see. OK, so let's have a look outside, and after emerging from the quarter-mile-long Sparnik Tunnel, uh, the first notable feature is the 9-arch, 230-metre-long Carnon Viaduct uh, that crosses the river it is named after. Opened in 1933, it replaced an earlier structure designed by the legendary Isambard Kingdom Brunel uh, that suffered problems with its foundations, unfortunately, due to the nature of the terrain underneath. Uh, we passed the small station of Perrinwell uh, before arriving at Penryn. And now this is a very interesting station. It, it has a single platform, but it's also got a passing loop. So from what I can gather, the train that comes back to Truro waits at the northern end of the platform, and the southbound train, the one we're on, pulls in past the points uh, to the southern end of the platform. And, and I understand the station used to be double track with a platform either side until the beaching cuts of the 1960s. Uh, well, in order to increase service frequency, the passing loop was installed in 2008, along with this platform extension so that both trains could effectively use the same side. Well, I've never seen this before, but it's pretty neat, isn't it? Do you know of any other stations that have this arrangement? Please let me know in the comments below if you do. Now, shortly after leaving Penryn, we cross the old viaduct of the same name, where you can just about make out some views of the estuary looking towards Falmouth. And next up is Penmere Station, which I think is the most architecturally impressive halt on the line. And it does look like one of these country halts you see, doesn't it? 
and the platform shelter has been wonderfully preserved, as have the station signs and notice boards. And you'll see a very similar station to this, incidentally, on the, um, the Lou Valley line, which I'll cover a little bit later on in this series. And now we reach Falmouth Town, which I think could be the best station to alight at if you want to head straight for the town centre. And a lot of people did appear to get off at this point. However, I pressed on the last half a mile to reach the end of the line and was rewarded by this interesting bower-roofed canopy uh, covering most of the station platform. And the station itself is neat and tidy, a functional, I guess, and, and made more colourful by this lovely mosaic of a HST, I think, speeding across an estuary somewhere in Cornwall. I wonder if any of these Class 43s have ever ventured down this line in the past. And the other side of the platform is, is a rather bland and uninspiring car park, but I reckon most passengers would be heading straight past that and down to Pendennis Castle, which is undoubtedly the main reason for using this terminus, I would say. Okay guys, well, um, yeah, I've just got into Falmouth Docks, um, it's not really a lot to see here, I thought we'd be close to the dock, to be honest. Uh, so I've got to get up to Leyland, uh, which I'm really looking forward to um, visiting, so in order to do that I've got to get back straight back on this train. So I'm going to do that, and um, I'll catch you in a little while. Cheers for now. And here's another shot of the Penryn Viaduct, looking north this time. Uh, with a length of just 19 kilometres, the, the single track line it still manages to squeeze in six stations, but as you probably noticed, the operating speed isn't exactly high. Uh, maximum is 80 kilometres an hour. Well, it's not about speed though, is it, with these lines? And also note that although our train stopped at Perrinwell on the way down, it didn't do so on the way back up. And I gather this is due to the passing loop at Penryn, and when there are two trains in operation, only alternate services call. But let me know if you have any more information on this. And as we rejoin the London to Penzance main line, uh, just a quick bit of information regarding ticket prices and I was, I was planning to visit as many branch lines as I could today uh, so I opted for a Cornwall Ranger ticket uh, which is a day ranger and um, enabled me to travel along the main line between Plymouth and Penzance and any of the branch lines in between. Uh, these are shown on the map here as the solid green lines. Oh and the ticket also includes the Plymouth to Gunnis Lake branch line in blue over in the east. The cost for the day was £13.50, but there are various discounts for rail card users. And I would have thought this was pretty good value though, because I uh, believe me, I did try and get around as many lines as I could. I didn't manage them all, uh, but I hope this and the next couple of videos will give you a feel for the lines and how, in my opinion, they really blend into the landscape and contribute immensely to the rich history of the Cornwall area.
Uh, finally, and very slowly, uh, we arrive back at Truro Station. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this content. Now, please leave me a like if you have. And, as always, guys, all comments are greatly appreciated. Uh, thanks for watching this, and I'll see you on the next branch line next week. Cheers for now. Thank you.